Madam Board of Wildlife Commissioners, uh, for today, Saturday. June 23rd, 2012. Uh, like to have uh, Commissioner Shrum uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, our veteran. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Suzanne, will you uh, uh, go ahead and do the roll call of the commission, please? Chairman McBeth. Here. Vice Chairman Rob. Here. Commissioner Drew. I'm sure he's going to be here shortly. Commissioner Drew? He. No, Commissioner Drew. Oh, that's right. I have an announcement. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Drew is uh, is not available today. He is uh, taking a, a well deserved vacation, I believe. Uh, he started his vacation today. So, anyway, he is not going to be here. Commissioner Howell. Here. Commissioner McNinch. Here. Commissioner Morai. Here. Commissioner Rain. Here. Commissioner Shrum. Here. And Commissioner Wallace. Here. Okay, and can we uh, do a roll call of the uh, county advisory boards? Paul Dixon Park, Rex Flowers, Washoe, Gil Yana, Carson, Steve Justin, Andrew County, Dame Bradfield, Lincoln, Michael Gerard, Humble, Joe Aaron Lyon, Joe Graham, Virginia, Jim Evans, Eureka. Good night, okay, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, um, we've got a packed agenda. We got, I'm hoping that we can move through some of the regulations uh, quickly since we did workshop them yesterday, but uh, I'm going to be pushing pretty hard uh, to try to get through the agenda, uh, get us out of here in decent time. Uh, so, uh, anyway, first item on the agenda is member items, announcements, correspondence. Uh, commissioners may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the commission. Any item requiring commission action may be scheduled on a future commission agenda. The commission will review and may discuss correspondence sent or received by the commission since the last regular meeting and may provide copies for the exhibit file. Uh, commissioners may provide hard copies of their correspondence for the written record. Correspondence sent or received by Secretary May Mayor will also be discussed. Um, so, go ahead and open it up, and I believe uh, uh, Vice Chairman Rob has uh, an item. Yes, I do, and, and uh, it's on a topic we're going to talk about a few times today, uh, sage grouse, but it's a, in a different context, and that's the Governor's Sage Grouse Committee uh, that has been called by the Governor that has to conclude its work by the end of July. Uh, the committee was formed uh, to keep the economic drivers in the state going, mining, ranching, uh, energy development, and you know, just a general way of life in Nevada. We need to maintain that, but we need to look at the listing. And, and so he called a uh, committee together, and uh, just for everybody, uh, information who's on the committee, uh, who they represent. We have Jeff Ciccarelli representing the energy uh, people. He uh, President of MD Energy on the North, uh, Alan Biagi, former director of conservation natural resources for the state. Now he's representing mining. Uh, JJ Goikachia representing ranching. Bevan Lister representing agriculture. Carl Uriaga, uh, local uh, uh, county like representative. He represents local government. Uh, Bob Kroll, he was the mayor of Carson City. He's been charged with chairing and keeping the committee going. Uh, Tina Nappy, uh, conservation representative. And then Ms. Henry, she's the tribal representative from the Pyramid Lake uh, Paiute tribe. Uh, there were some things brought up uh, about the 5,000 bird limit. You know, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the 5,000 number. Using that, uh, it's, it's been brought up in Elko County a few times. and. And the Elko County representative has come to our committee with that viewpoint. And uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we, we all wish it was that easy, uh, 5,000. But the, species by species, you can't really peg a number on it. Uh, it was brought up by Ted Cook from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that you have 600 grizzly bears, and they're looking at taking them off the list. If we had to wait to 5,000, you know, you look at different species that are being reintroduced that come off the list, they don't even get up to 5,000 and they're deemed stable population. So 
numbers are hard to deal with. Uh, the other thing that I've learned a lot in this committee is uh, basically the feds have to take all the information given to them and make a determination warranted or not warranted. And it really comes down to can the feds support a court action against their decision? Because no matter what their decision is, it's going to court one way or another. And so the feds need the information to base their decision and, and a decision that will hold up a legal challenge. And that's what it, it, it seems like the, the feds have to make a decision, but the ones really with the final say is a court action in, in the end. So you, you have to set yourself up knowing that the court is going to come. Uh, we're really lucky. Uh, the state of Wyoming has loaned us Bob Budd. Uh, the state of Wyoming has a plan that the uh, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has kind of looked at and said we like that kind of direction. So uh, the governor of the state of Wyoming has put on loan his key guy that helped him put the plan together to the other states. Uh, it's He's on Wyoming time working in Nevada. He's worked in uh, Oregon, Utah, Idaho. He's basically on loan to all the other states to so all the states are working in conjunction and trying to come up with a plan that works. Even though we have different issues in each state, there's a framework to work from to, to keep us going forward. Uh, it's a process that is going different than I had anticipated uh, because of Bob. He, he's brought in a plan to get us to where we need to be. and. Uh, his plan, I thought we'd get in and we'd just start arguing with each other over limiting factors and our viewpoints, and we haven't really started that yet. It's been more of uh, information, a lot of presentations, and uh, the presentations have been more informative to the entire group, so we're making a more informed decision going forward. And uh, at, the, at the end of the meeting the other day, we were asked to come up with what our four limiting factors were. And after everything we've seen, there's a ton of limiting factors, and it was really hard to narrow down to four. Uh, but he had an exercise, and he wanted us to give them four, expecting us to have commonality in some of them, and some of us be a little bit on the fringe. And what it came down to was four, or the four turns into seven, because not all of us have the same four. So uh, the the Seven that have come forward, uh, the one that was on everybody's list is fire and cheatgrass. Uh, the, the amount of habitat that we've lost and the, the maps that presented that, that we were presented with, just shows we're losing there. Uh, the other one uh, was PJ encroachment. It was amazing. We had a presentation, and there was a gentleman help me out with his name, Ken, that did the uh, the PJ encroachment stuff. Uh, Robin Tout. Yes. He's taken, he did a doctorate on habitat and stuff, and he took pictures 40 years ago. And he's gone back to these same locations year after year. And the changes that have occurred in my lifetime over the past 40 years, it just, uh, you look at the pictures he's taken, you go, man, it's great mule deer habitat, great sage grouse habitat. And in a 40 year period, not just little areas, whole landscapes have turned into full canopy pinyon juniper that uh, don't support wildlife. So that, that one was, you hear about it, but we got to see it through the photos that he had, and it was amazing. Uh, energy, that was one of the ones that really went up there and uh, there's multiple things going on with energy in the state. Uh, you have to get power to the people that need the energy, but there's all the energy development with a ton of geothermal and proposed solar and uh, wind generation and the fragmentation of habitat that comes along with those energy projects uh, really plays a factor. Energy also leads into one of the other limiting factors and that has come up on the list, and that's ravens. Uh, you build power lines, ravens 
key on power lines they use it for hunting off of and use it for resting and nesting and uh, so energy contributes to another thing identified as, as a limiting factor and that's ravens and ravens we had a real good presentation on ravens and they are 70 percent of the depredation on nesting birds uh, they really don't target the I, I thought that they would fly around and they'd see eggs and they'd go down and get the eggs uh, they, they wait till the hen goes and sits on the nest and they basically push the hen off the nest and take the eggs and uh, they're they have documented videos it, it's amazing the pictures they have uh, video in the nest I don't know how they get the little cameras in the nest and then get the pictures and video they do but it's pretty amazing to watch uh, wild horses and uh, the wild horse grazing and, and uh, some livestock grazing if not managed right uh, grazing has been seen as a limiting factor because of the wild horses but it's also been seen as a tool we can use to help uh, improve range conditions, uh, help wildfires. I mean, most of these tools, uh, they can hurt and help. Uh, you just have to use them properly. Uh, another one that came up was mining. Uh, that's probably not what you should say in Elko County, but it is on the list of the seven. And, uh, we just need to make sure going forward that we do everything in a responsible manner. Uh, and the, the final one was range management. Uh, we see that one of the biggest factors, if the bird is listed, you basically have to leave the range alone at that time. And that was probably going to be a harder impact on the bird than if we manage it. Listing it could be the worst thing that happens to it. Uh, it was brought up that all the work that Endow does, the LEC visits, the survey data, the telemetry and all that, if, if we stop hunting it, the money goes away to do all that and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service isn't going to pick up that duty, BLM's not going to pick up that duty, it would basically go unchecked at that point. And uh, the, the listing's probably the worst thing that could happen. Uh, one thing that I am really impressed with is the participation uh, by uh, the state agencies and uh, the federal. Uh, Amy Lewiters, uh, Raul Morales from the BLM. Amy's been at every single meeting, every single hour. She hasn't missed. Uh, she's the state director of BLM and uh, she's fully engaged there for questions and answers and uh, she's really going out of her way to participate and uh, make sure that we have the information and she's getting the information. Uh, Ted Cook, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, he's there the whole time uh, giving us information, taking information and, and uh, you know trying to help us through the process also. Uh, Ken, he's there uh, as a resource anytime we need it. Sean has given multiple presentations uh, it's a it's a daunting task when you look at what we have to lose it's great uh, we haven't got down the brass tacks and really started arguing with each other yet but I know that time's coming uh, the one thing I do know and one thing that's been made clear if we keep going down the path we are we're losing it's not going to continue uh, <coughs> Energy has to look different, ranching has to look different, mining has to look different. If we don't all look different, we all lose. Uh, there's going to have to be some compromise here and you just can't be business as usual or it's going to get listed. People don't like to change the way they do business, but if they don't, uh, a listing is a bigger impact than changing a little bit of your business. and so. Uh, that's what we're trying to get to is keep the economic driver going, make the changes that are bearable to keep your business going, but recognize we do, do need to make changes. So uh, that's what I know about the Sage Grouse Committee. So. Okay. 
Good report. Okay, any other uh, member items, uh, Commissioner Howell? Uh, yesterday I was going to ask uh, uh, Deputy Director uh, Cates about the Upland game money and the duck money. If it it's getting close to a million dollars in total, and uh, my question is, uh, it's it could never be at risk, could it? Like, uh, remember we talked about the heritage money at one time, possibility of it being at risk, you know, if the state tried to grab it? Uh, for the record, Patrick Cates, um, the issue of risk to our funds of being seized by the state, I, um, you know, there was a special session prior to last session uh, where there was some discussion about that. Um, I think we convinced them convincingly um, that that was illegal under federal law. We actually got a letter from the feds saying that that would be a, a, a taking of sportsmen's dollars and not permissible and it would put our federal funds at risk uh, once they receive that information from the feds. Um, any attempt to go after that money was dropped and I haven't heard a peep out of it. Um, is duck stamp or um, upland game at risk? Uh, no more than any other sportsman's dollars. And I would say the risk um, of the state sweeping it is uh, very small. Yeah, and uh, the other question about it, uh, the uh, upland game money and the duck stamp money, uh, it doesn't have the same restrictions on it like the heritage money does. In other words, uh, you, you could spend it all in one year if you wanted to, right? I mean, the, it's, the possibility exists. Uh, yeah, there's no, it's a, quite a bit different than Heritage. I mean, Heritage has got a formula where you can spend 75% of the right. current revenue. Yeah, so there's no restrictions on that money. No, as long as it's put towards the purpose. Somebody in the public had wondered about that, and so I thought I'd bring it up. No, it doesn't build up a balance like Heritage does, you know, automatically that you can't touch the principal. It doesn't have any of those kind of provisions, no. Okay. I think that answers it. Uh, I had one other uh, uh, announcement. Uh, I guess you'd call it an announcement. Um, I recently wrote a letter to uh, Governor Sandoval, and uh, my term on this commission ends the end of this month. And I uh, informed the governor that uh, I would not be seeking another term, and I would not accept uh, another term if it was offered. So just wanted to let everybody know, put a few smiles on some faces, and I'm gone. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, you know, for your service. I mean, you know, it's been a great three years. Uh, it's been interesting. The first two years were the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, any other uh, uh, comments? Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, I also had some information on sage grouse, but I was going to hold this afternoon until uh, we have the sage grouse okay. thing. And uh, I have some correspondence here, not not much left anymore. Um, this is from uh, Dr. Lent. It says, my name, is, <clears throat> my name is Gerald A. Lent. I'm a past chairman of the Wildlife Commission, so I have some knowledge of how the system works. I'm a hunter, <laughs> excuse me, I'm a hunter but the system is out of control. End down needs to be put in an oversight agency. As a chairman of the Wildlife Commission, I uncovered scientific and financial gross anomalies, and when I began an investigation, Endow wouldn't comply with the commission request. Therefore, this makes the commission impotent. The director of Endow said he doesn't have to answer to the commission for information requests as he only reports to the governor. I had to demand the information by filing a freedom of information request against them, and they still were not compliant with the information. Therefore, I repeat, the commission is impotent. You too. <laughs> and down uh, needs to be person. put under the conservation and natural resources where each department has built in checks and balances for financial accountability and operational accountability. Currently, Endel has no built in financial accountability as they don't report to anybody. Endow now has no checks and balances and spends a lot of money. Endow needs to be put into an existing agency 
that can run things efficiently. And Dow is greatly influenced by outside non-government organizations who donate great sums of money to them. Recently, Endow received 150000 in a lump sum from an NGO who also donated close to $1 million the past few years in money and services according to their tax records. An organization can buy influence so easily with this setup. One can't lobby. Other executive branches of Nevada government like Endow is lobbied with money. Example, one can't lobby taxation with money. Now, if they were a part of conservation and natural resources, would have to give donated dollars to a general fund and in there, they would then have checks and balances. I feel it would be a non-functional change to reconstruct the Wildlife Commission with only a few minority public members whose ideas would never see the light of day since they would always be in the minority. And that's from Dr. Gerald Lent, past chairman, Wildlife Commission. And that's it. No. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Ray. Thank you. A few things. One was, a, I know from yesterday I checked with uh, uh, Suzanne actually brought to my attention that the letter I referred to, Mr. Bundy, had, had been put into the record at our previous meeting. I just hadn't gotten until after. There was one statement in there that I was wondering about, seemed a little interesting, was said, Nevada Wildlife Director Ken Mayer, you sent a letter to the Endow Board of Directors and others stating Cliven D. Bundy is a troublemaker. I'll send another mem memo to your board of directors and others refusing to forward the constructive notices stating I reviewed these attachments and found them to be inappropriate to be distributed by Endow. And, you know, he continues, but those items, I'm perplexed as to why they would be inappropriate to be distributed by Endow. I know we've heard from Mr. Bundy. He gave, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so down in Vegas, and he had... It seemed to me, from what we had seen, that he's done a huge amount to help out the wildlife, specifically small wildlife and others, but um, through the water developments he has created in the areas down there, in a huge area, in fact. And I don't see, I see everything but a troublemaker. Anyways, providing that information he provided there was true. A couple things. Um, one I touched on a little yesterday that I'd still like to hear more about. I know it was kind of tough for Elko residents to voice their opinion because there's only on items not on the agenda, and most of these items we're talking, I'm talking about are, are most important to Elko, I would think, are not on this agenda. And it would kind of be nice if they'd have another opportunity during the agenda to do so. And that is the doe hunts and the bighorn um, sheep transplants. Um, you know, because I'm still very worried about the bighorn sheep transplants, specifically those in the Ruby Mountains here. Because when they come in, I'm given to understand, they're still kind of come from the same source population as the previous bighorn sheep that came here before. So we'll have no, or almost no genetic difference in those sheep. Likely they'll be vaccinated, they'll come in, they'll propagate, their offspring will come into contact with the same pathogens that are up there today, that are up there in the mountain goat populations likely and the other wildlife populations that are out there. And unless something is done to change the conditions, any reasonable person should indeed assume that there will be another die-off. And then we'll be back to, well, was those domestic sheep again? Maybe there's some cows up there. Well, there was a couple goats got away. It happened once, it happened twice, and you don't do anything different. It'll happen a third time, and then the next guys will be wondering, well, hmm, well, maybe we should do it again. It's pretty foolhardy unless we come up with a, some conditions that will change. In my opinion, and I kind of like to hear what the Elka residents have to say about that. They, a lot of these guys spent more time in the mountains uh, here than I'll ever uh, dream of doing. Also, the um, hunting situation here with the dramatic increase in tags, specifically in Elko County, because Elko County has, we'll call it rough numbers, half our deer population. At times, in historically, they've had as much as two-thirds deer population statewide. You know, and I'm predicting that we'll hear from a lot of people, hunters and landowners from Elko County, who'll be wondering why we've put out all these tags. And with the deer population as low as it is, our success rates are likely not going to be that great. Our population, and we're already talking a decreased population, I'm sure the people here know this, according to Endow's own uh, summation, decreased population, and yet the solution is to, to 
eliminate a pile of doe deer, go out and kill by a lot of do more doe deer, as well as a huge jump in the buck pup, uh, buck harvest. And you know, it's going to reiterate something I keep coming up with a few times: is, is you know, kill the do doe deer to save the deer, kill the cow elk to decrease the elk population. You know, this department, this commission need to pick it, pick a solution here. What, what's the way, which way is going to go? If you kill the cows and, and does, is that going to help population or decrease population? Well, in deer, it's different. In cow, elk, it's different. That's not a logical conclusion. Um, we've continually heard a lot about carrying capacity, and yet we've seen to date zero data on the carrying capacity. We hear a few, well, some study somewhere says that there might be some relationship. Um, well, we ha did have, a uh, question was brought up by Mr. Carpenter yesterday about there was a um, doe hunt a couple years ago we had that was justified basically on doing research, killing does to do research to see what would happen with the deer population. To date, I mean, we at and uh, when the mule deer committee was coming, we asked for that data. We finally came up with a small portion of the data. We've never seen the raw data, and we've never seen the completed report to this date. I mean, if it hasn't been done now, it's ancient history almost. It needs to come out now, and raw data from it should indeed all be thrown out. We did see a little bit of, what we call it, uh, almost collated data, but it was a. Uh, impartial at that time and it was not the raw data and it wasn't the final report on it. We should have both. Um, I'd like to hear from Elka residents on that, what they've thought of those items and as well as the sage grass issue coming up. I know the questions I heard yesterday that were uh, brought up by uh, our former assemblyman Mr. Carpenter, those questions should very much be answered. They are vital to this area finding out what's going on with these deer populations in this area and indeed the sage grouse population. Um, now I'm extremely worried that we'll be coming up with, well, you know, the hunt was not good. Well, there was this drought kind of showed up and oh, there's a drought every second year or fifth year. What are we going to blame it on this time? Well, it can't possibly be over harvest. No, not possible. You know, and of course, we never seem to really touch upon the predation problem. Also, our predation committee, or wildlife damage management committee, my understanding hasn't met. We still don't have a plan <coughs> that should have been active starting basically uh, July of last year. I still haven't seen it. A few gentlemen have seen it, have seen more than I have. We're acting a whole year, $3 money. Maybe it's been spent on something, maybe it's not. Commission's supposed to prove that. Uh, you know, if we're not going to spend their money in a fashion and it's not going to be approved by this commission, maybe that'd give that three dollar money back to the hunters because obviously it's not being used to wise the way it was designed. If it's not being used the way it's designed, let's get rid of it. There's nothing that says you have to charge it. If we're not going to use it, give it back. Um, that's pretty much most of it, and we'll hold off sage grass stuff till that item. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the initial uh, member items down here. Okay, I just have one. Uh, I've received a letter from the uh, Nevada Waterfowl Association, and uh, and basically it uh, it's with regard to the herder, heritage vendor uh, uh, request that they made uh, for both a antelope and a, and a mule deer tag, and uh, and uh, they they're just acknowledging that the um, heritage committee has. Uh, 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 recommended a um, antelope tag, and so anyway, I don't think that this letter got to uh, anybody else other than me. So I'd like to get that uh, submitted for the record. Um, is there any? Um, I got a I got an email from uh, Deputy Director Haskins um, with respect to Wafwa, and we do have a. An upcoming uh, uh, WAFA event, and um, and uh, I'm I'm concerned that uh, may, maybe there's not going to be uh, anybody that uh, that can go to that. Is that what what where do we stand on that right now? Right. <coughs> uh, Ken Mayor, for the record, I think uh, 
Commissioner Robb is going, and so is Commissioner uh, McNinch. Oh, uh, we're re they're registered, uh, ready to go. Uh, there's a small myself and Rich may or may not go, um, and we have one other staff person that's okay. going to be attending. Okay, so we do have that in place. Yes. Now. Okay. Um, uh, Rich was uh, had uh, D Deputy Director Haskins had sent an email with regard to um, somebody being on the Wafwa com Commissioners Committee. Is that something that uh, <laughs> yeah, one one of the two commissioners, as Dave knows, uh, will give the state report, which we've prepared for you. Yeah, it's it's pretty informal. I mean, it's one of those deals where uh, you know anybody can get up, uh, check, and I can share that okay. responsibility. Okay. So yeah, it's, all that's been handled. Yes. Okay. Good. Then I'm. Uh, that's all I needed to make sure. I just had this email that I hadn't uh, gotten a re resolution at least. In, in fact, in, uh, in in Arizona, Dave was delivered it uh, two seconds before he had to give his presentation. Right. We'll do better this year, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we made it. <laughs> we did. I saw that same email and it said committee on it. And the last <laughs> thing Dave and I need right now is another committee. So I didn't raise my hand. Okay. <laughs> well, that's why I mentioned it. We just did it for you. It's good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, yeah. I, I would point out we do have Commissioner uh, Dar uh, Darren Elmore here from the OHV Commission, and he's slated to talk at the end of the day, and uh, he requested it was possible sometime this morning if we could um, modify the agenda to allow him to talk about the OHV Commission. Okay. Uh, do we want to... Uh, want you want to do it right after the county advisory boards? Uh, maybe uh, do it at that time? Okay. Uh, okay, well, if, if there's no other, uh, any additional uh, member items from uh, the commission, then I'll go ahead and move on to the next agenda item, which is county advisory boards uh, to manage wildlife member items. Uh, CAB members may present emergent items. No action may be taken by the commission. Any item requiring commission action will be scheduled on future commission agenda. Any CAB member items? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back. Then let's see, that is uh, agenda item 18E, off highway vehicle commission report. Um, Chief uh, Gay Morton uh, Von Michi uh, and uh, I guess Darren uh, Elmore. Uh, so, what, uh, any, uh, do we need to do a motion to, uh, to move that uh, on the agenda or? Uh, What's the, we just uh, agreed to do it. The correct protocol is to suspend the rules to modify the agenda at this point. And if you look at Robert's rules, you got to suspend the rules. Two thirds, cars, two thirds vote of the commission. Suspend the rules. Go ahead and change the commission, the agenda. Okay. So, uh, to do what you said. Okay. So, is that a motion? Yeah, All right. Eight. And this, what you're looking at is 18 A E. All right, move to suspend the rules so that we can talk to. move agenda item 18 E to between item 15 and 16. Okay. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, it's done. Darren, you want to come on up? <laughs> 